Hello. Today, we'll have additional examples on the following topics which have been discussed in the lecture slides. For doing so, we'll have a brief recap on the conditions for the following theorems and tests. So we'll have additional examples on the mean value theorem, Rolle's theorem, relative extrema, and the first derivative test for relative extrema. So recall, for the mean value theorem, what are the conditions of this theorem for this theorem to hold? We need to satisfy two things. The first is so it should be continuous on the closed interval a b. Sorry. The next is f should be differentiable on the open interval a b. And if those two has been have been satisfied, then we're sure that there exists a number say c on the open interval a b such that this is true f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a all over all over b minus a graphically speaking that means that if you have a function say function f which is defined over a closed interval a b and it is also continuous on that closed interval a b and differentiable as we see there's no cusp in the graph it is differentiable in the open interval a b then we're sure that we can find a number c such that this condition holds again this condition this one simply states that this thing is the slope of the line connecting these two points these points are a f of b sorry a f of a and b f of b so the the line connecting this thing here say you have this line has a slope equal to this thing and what the theorem assures is that if this two has been satisfied there is a number between a and b such that say um there's a number between a and b which is c such that the slope of the tangent line of the curve to this point so this is the tangent line is the same as the slope of the line connecting the points a f of b and b f a f of a and b f of b okay another one is the Rolle's theorem the Rolle's theorem states that the Rolle's theorem states that if you have a continuous function basically it's a variation of the mean value theorem and f is differentiable on the open interval also f of a is equal to f of p then what we're sure is there exists a number c between a and b such that this is true f prime of c is zero Again, this is true because of this. Dahil, again, variation lang siya ng mean value theorem. Kasi, papansin natin dito, if f of b is equal to f of a, then the whole numerator becomes um, zero. So, it is imperative that we know that b is always greater than a. Take note lang natin. b should be greater than a. Graphically speaking, ang sinasabi niyan, kapag meron kang continuous at differentiable function on the closed and the open interval A, B respectively, say this is A, and gawin natin. Sorry. And probably this is B. 
okay if f of a and f of b are the same so this is f of b as well then what is true is that there exists a number c in the graph such that the derivative of the function at that point is zero which is in case yung mga nandito tama ba? the tangent line to these curves are zero so that means that there exists number c say this thing here and it exists between a b this thing here and it exists between a b such that the tangent line at that point is zero the tangent line at this point is zero okay next we recall relative extrema which can be obtained via the first derivative test okay to find such again anong kailangan gawin we need to find first the critical numbers numbers which are defined as the zeros of the derivative or the numbers that will make the derivative undefined also the critical numbers should be part of the domain of the original function when finding the critical numbers we need to line it up in a table to summarize uh, the conclusions for our function so we need to create a table of signs uh, later we'll discuss or discuss further how to make such table of signs and lastly we make conclusions on when or which interval which intervals is f increasing or decreasing and when is f sorry when is a critical number considered relative extrema okay in our example we will embed the recalling of such method or such processes later in life okay okay now what we'll do here is we answer we'll answer the following examples for mvt and the rose theorem you have two and for the relative extreme and FTT, you have the following. Now let's proceed in answering the following. Now let's try the first set of examples where you need to verify whether the given function satisfy the assumptions of the Ross theorem over the given intervals. Then if it does, let us find the value of C such that F prime of C equals zero. Okay, the solution. Again, you need to check if the conditions are being satisfied the first one is f continuous over the closed interval negative 1 1 since f is an absolute valid function it is continuous on its domain okay so since f is an absolute valid function it is continuous on its domain and let's take note that the domain of f is r hence it is continuous over the closed interval negative one to one as well the first condition is satisfied now how about the second condition well technically if you know the graph of a function say this is an absolute valid function if it contains a cusp or a part of the graph that is not smooth then of the derivative of the function at that cost usually does not exist to verify that analytically let us consider the absolute value of x minus 1 uh, using the definition of 
the absolute value of x. So recall first that the absolute value of x is equal to x whenever x is greater than or equal to 0 and it is negative x whenever x is negative, x is less than 0. In this case, f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1. That means that absolute value of x becomes an x together with this minus 1 whenever x is greater than or equal to 0. And this absolute value of x becomes negative x. So then copy this 1 minus 1 whenever x is less than 0. And to verify if it is differentiable open over the open interval, negative 1 to 1, we need to check if it is differentiable at 0. To do so, we recall the, the right-hand and left-hand derivatives, and they should be equal for the derivative at 0 to exist. So the right-hand derivative at 0, we have this notation, is equal to the limit of f of x minus f of 0 all over x minus 0 as x approaches 0 from the right, right? So this is equal to the limit of f of x is x minus 1 whenever x goes to the right of x, the values of x comes from the right side of 0. Hence, we need to choose this first part of the piecewise function. So that is x minus 1 minus f of 0. In this case, we need to choose when is the function defined at 0. And that is in the first condition, in the first um, sub-function. Sub Hence, when x is equal to 0, we need to choose this one. So at x equals 0, that is 0 minus 1 or negative 1. Okay? All over x minus 0 as x approaches 0 from the right. Okay? So this becomes the limit of x minus 1 plus 1 or x over x as x approaches 0 positive. This is equal to the limit of 1. x approaches 0 positive and that and that is the limit of a constant is is that constant itself now let us check the left hand derivative similarly this is equal to the limit of f of x minus f of 0 over x minus 0 but left hand derivative takes the limit as x approaches a from the left in this case 0 from the left Okay, so this is equal to the limit of, again we need to choose uh, the right f of x whenever x goes to the left of 0. And in this case, this is the function defined whenever x is less than 0. So we have a negative x minus 1 for f of x minus f of 0. Again, f of 0 happens on the first sub function so when x is 0 0 minus 1 is still negative 1 all over x as x approaches 0 from the left so this becomes the limit of negative x minus 1 plus 1 is negative x over x as x approaches 0 from the left and that is the limit of negative 1 as x approaches 0 from the left and the limit of a constant is that constant itself. Hence, since right-hand derivative evaluated at 0 is not the same as the left-hand derivative evaluated at 0, then we can say that f is not differentiable at 0. Okay? Hence, what do we say about the, the second condition? Is it satisfied? Obviously, it is not. In effect, f is not differentiable over the interval, open interval negative 1. Okay? Again, recall that 
function is differentiable over an open interval if it is differentiable on all points in the open interval. Uh, the assumptions of the Ross theorem has not been satisfied.